I had a lot of dope moments working on Always Driving and Prosper, the album. I've been to 40 House. We have uh, worked on some production, worked with some of his production team. Hagler produced a crazy joint with me, Chris Brown and Ty Dolla Signs. I've been in with DJ Khalil, who like kind of spearheaded the whole album sonically. He just worked and brought in like a lot of different um, instrument players. Uh, I had Clams Casino sitting in a room with DJ Khalil, chopping up all of the live instrumentation that we was creating because we was just doing a lot of jam sessions. Clams Casino would just place a room mic on a table and just record everything. So he'll take whatever we produced and he'll chop it up and it'll just sound like something totally different. Like, it was crazy. So we was just basically sampling ourselves. So just getting Clams Casino and DJ Khalil in the same room um, was just crazy for me. It was mind boggling. Me and Swiss Beats bugging out in the studio. Um, I got in with him early on. He created a lot of stuff. We was even like painting in the studio. We brought canvases inside the, the studio and we was just like painting on canvases. A lot of the times we was just vibing out. We wasn't even really working on music sometimes. I was working with Pharrell two of the days and um, it was just amazing because he was just schooling me on sound and just like music. He's really like a monk to me. Like, you know, he could do no wrong and he just, he's great at guiding people. Um, he has a lot of knowledge. I went to the studio with uh, Timbaland and Missy, which was one of the craziest moments for me because not only was I in with Pharrell, you know, somebody I just looked up to all the time coming up in the game, but then I got a chance to like work with Timbaland and Missy. Well, I didn't really get a chance to work with Timbaland. He just basically critiqued a lot of the works, um, but I got a chance to work with Missy on the album. Timbaland was basically telling me how he loved my music, my flow, and how Jay-Z put him onto my music. That's how he first heard about me. So I just thought that was like crazy. I even worked with uh, Cameo, the old group Cameo, yeah. Them guys is from Harlem too, Larry Blackman and and those guys are like great, like getting in the studio with them putting some funk on a, on a, uh, a old sounding retro kind of beat. Me and Khalil worked on. Khalil's a genius to say the least. And I just feel like I wanted to see what would happen if I merged his sounds with Clams Casino sounds. Cause Clams Casino sounds make you feel so good and it's so ambient and it's so opposite of what Khalil does. Cause Khalil is like a very polished musician and um, he knows how to orchestrate these polished, big sounds, orchestral sounds. So I wanted to mesh both worlds together. And it ha what, exactly what I was thinking happened. We just created a whole nother type of sound. It was just amazing because Clams, one of his dreams was to meet Khalil. And I didn't even know that. I was just wanting to do what I wanted to do. And he was like, yo, I appreciate it. We flew to LA, we went to uh, Khalil's compound. Clams Casino really was just like, he didn't even talk much. He just listened. He recorded the, like all of our jam sessions and like went home and just kind of like zoned out, picked what he was liking out of the jam sessions and then like started looping beats. And we just picked from out of those loops what we wanted to go off of. Just all of those moments for me was just dope because it's like all of these different personalities uh, meshing together like a, a perfect pot of gumbo. When you listen to this album, it's definitely gonna be like something you never heard before. It's gonna be like some familiar trap law sounds in there, um, but for the most part, I'm pushing the boundaries of my sonics and just like trying to innovate music, create a new sound, fresh. It feels good. It represents my life. It's my rags to riches story. What you got from Trap Law basically was the aesthetic. It was um, the guy that was inside of the ASAP mob. This right here, Always Strive and Prosper album is about Ferg, my life story, where I came from. And um, yeah, we're taking it to another level sonically, but just the stories behind it. Me talking about my uncle, me and uh, Schoolboy Q got a song about both of our uncles called Let It Bang. I feel like everybody got a crazy uncle in their family. So this is a story about mine. And then I got a, another song called Psycho that comes in before uh, Let It Bang. Psycho is basically part two 
to my song called Uncle on Ferg Forever Mixtape. So if you heard Uncle, then you'll know like my relationship with my uncle. And then going into this album is like more in depth on like everything that happened in the household. It's very personal. It's like an open diary and uh, I just think it's some of my best work. It's a lot of people that made it on this album and there's a lot of people that didn't make it on this album. Just to be clear, like all the music was amazing, but I only get 13 songs. So it was like a lot of songs that got cut. Man, I got a crazy joint called Swipe Life with Rick Ross, that's crazy. I got a joint with uh, Big Sean, that's dope, called The World Is Mine, a relationship song. Got a crazy song with Chris Brown and Todd Dollar Signs that the ladies is gonna love. I got a song with Missy, uh, Fat Man Scoop, and my in-house producer Stelios worked on that. It's like a up-tempo dance record is gonna be like out of this world. I recorded the Missy record and then I played it for her. That was the first song I, I played for her ever. And she was like, hold the fuck up, like three minutes into the song. She's telling Tim like, this is the music I wanna make. You know, I wound up just sending her the record, she blessed it, yeah. And that was huge for me because I know she don't jump on anybody record. I was in VA when I played the record for it. Tim called my producer and he was like, yo, if I heard Fergus in VA, I would like to introduce him to Missy. I just packed all my stuff up and drove over there to them and history was made. Well, working on Always Strive and Prosper, just creatively, I just felt more free. I didn't want to be like boxed into trap or like what was going on because I know that's just a fad. I just wanted to show people how diverse I was musically and, and the music that I love, the music that I, I grew up on. Like I was listening to a lot of Marvin Gaye and Aretha Franklin and Stevie Wonder. And I was like, man, how can I incorporate what I love into this project? And I said, damn, what was they doing? What was James Brown doing? They was having jam sessions and they was really feeling the music. So that's really, what I wanted to do. I wanted to have jam, jam sessions, freestyle, write. I wanted to just like put it all out there, like, you know, just straight off like emotion versus like overthinking it or just using computers. Like I really wanted to get it in with like a live band. I set up a mic in the middle of the room and it'd be like two people on the guitars, one person on keys, you know what I'm saying? And you know, Khalil's just rocking with us, whatever he's doing at the time. Just rock like that. Play the thumb piano, like, you know, it was like a playground for me. And I wanted it to be fun. That's how we created most of these songs. It was just straight out of fun. We used to steal from them so much, they used to give it to us for free because they knew we were not stealing it to sell it to somebody. We were stealing that because we needed that shit. You know what I'm saying? So she grabbed the one fucking 51 and so both of these chicks ass naked. So one of the girls is like bending over and one of the girls is on her knees. My first day I did shrooms, no homo, I went streaking. Like one o'clock in the morning, naked, running up the street, no homo. I don't know what got into me that day. I was off the shits. I feel like if I wanted to be something else, I would have been that. If I wanted to be a doctor, I would have I would have been that, you know what I'm saying? But I wanted to play basketball and when I, started having other shit going on in my life as far as really merging over to the streets and just being outside and adapting.